All right, let's do it again. Oh, no. One of my favorite cartoons I've ever seen has been of two guys in a doctor's office. One's the patient, one's the physician. Now the patient is a very old, frail, clearly a hundred year old man who just looks miserable. And the physician says to him, he says, Mr. Johnson, hey, do you remember when I told you to eat all your fruits and vegetables, take your medications, exercise daily, and we can add 15 years to your life? And the man nods, yes. The physician says, well, these are those 15 years, you know, implying that clearly you're miserable, but we've added 15 years to your life. And the point of the cartoon, which I think is very true, is that we've learned how to age longer in our society, but we haven't necessarily learned how to age well. Now, I believe that to be true as well within the church, but I'm talking more so about disagreements. I believe we've learned how to disagree within the church, but we haven't necessarily learned how to disagree well. And I'm gonna read a passage here from the book of Ephesians. And even the title itself, uh, The Unity in the Body of Christ, tells you what you need to know. It says, make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. That's Ephesians 4, 3. Now, all throughout the New Testament, the, the Bible is just riddled with people who disagree. You have Peter versus Paul, the Jew versus the Gentile, Abraham versus Lot, um, and, and the list continues. In almost every book, you'll find people who disagree. And I believe that they're in there for a reason. We're there to learn. And, like These people are not on opposite sides here. They're wearing the same jerseys. They're on the same team, but they disagree. One of my favorite stories from church history is between two friends, John Wesley and George Whitfield. Now, two friends, as they were, just did not see eye to eye on a lot of issues. John Wesley was on the British Isles side, founder of the Methodist Church, strong Arminian. Then you have George Whitfield on the American colony side, strong Calvinist. Again, they were friends, just didn't see eye to eye, whether that was practical organizational things, issues of theology. I mean, it was Whitfield who died first back in 1770. And when word got back to England, to Wesley, one of Whitfield's strong partisans, who didn't like Whitfield, didn't like his preaching, didn't like his theology, said to Wesley, he says, do you think we'll see Whitfield in heaven? Wesley says, no, no, I don't think so. The man's eyes brightened up. He says, oh, so you don't think Whitfield was a converted man then? And Wesley says, no, no, of course I do. I don't think we'll see Whitfield in heaven because he will be so close to the throne of God and I so far away. And it was Wesley who preached the memorial service in London at Whitfield's request. They understood that as long as the gospel was moving forward, they were going to rejoice. They understood that the common ground which they shared was far more important than any differences that distinguished or even divided them. In our increasingly divided world, with so many forces fighting against us, we can't afford to waste ammunition on friendly fire. For as the old saying goes, there are no enemies in a foxhole. So I'll leave you with this. In essential things, unity. In non-essential things, liberty. And in all things, love. So as Paul charges us in the New Testament, may we be eager to maintain the unity of the body through the bond of peace. And that is Jesus Christ.